what's it like to be given the greatest blessing that life can give you, which is a child, and simultaneous news that you've got stage four cancer? What, how, does, how did you process that in your head? Well, you know me, John. I like to make fun of things sometimes, and I, I call it tit for tot. <laughs> a tit for tot. <laughs> These are laughing matters. She played pigs, sex pots, and trunks, I think, is what she was pretty good at. Uh, she was an integral part of the theater community from day one. What I learned from her was grace and humor, even in really rough times. And it's horrible that she went when she went at her age, but she uh, left. Her son, Nathan, and I think that a lot of that humor lives in him still. I think that Nathan was brought to me as an, an angel to help me through all of this. Uh, she was uh, a life-changing individual for me. And it's still not easy. Ray Vigiano was an actor and board member with Theater Company of Lafayette. He brought humor to all of his acting roles. He was a compassionate person and a dedicated volunteer. He was known to have lived entirely in the moment, which made him a brilliant performer. Kent Harris died in November at age 71 after finishing his last novel, Our Souls at Night. Harif, who lived in Salida, wrote the critically acclaimed trilogy set in the small fictional town of Holt on Colorado's eastern plains. So indeed, the novels in the Plainsong trilogy were all adapted for the stage at the Denver Center Theater Company. In all his books, the themes are really about family. It, your family could be two old men with a 17-year-old girl and a new baby. That's a new family unit. was a composer of professional and amateur musicals, mainly performed in middle school and high school, but he wrote 102 musicals. He composed 102 musicals. The very first one I performed in the studio with him was Coconut Capers. Uh, in 2006, Bill Francoeur started Kahuna Beach Party a Beach Boys tribute band. And he's so smart that he then got his kids in the band. His son Justin on bass, who recently played for the 12 at the Denver Center. Ryan Francoeur, who played Lumiere in Beauty and the Beast at Little Tin Town Hall. And his daughter, Laura. He's so smart, he got to perform around the country with his three kids. That's one smart guy. Open the moment comes, you say. Jeffrey Gallegos, I remember, had this passion and this love and this energy and spirit for performing that I think is unmatched by anyone I've ever seen. And I remember when I walked into his memorial service in Pueblo and I saw his tap shoes, I was so struck because I thought that that was a perfect reflection of Jeffrey's life. Here were these tap shoes that were so worn and so beat and so broken and tattered and they were still, to a dancer's eye, a beautiful tap shoe that I remember him wearing. Michael was always fun to share the stage with in high school and college. The mischievous and loving gleam in his eye as he played Tony in West Side Story or Jesus in Godspell made the journey on stage with him joyous and memorable. Lloyd Norton was a drama professor and student and master student at the University of Northern Colorado and he was there from the mid-50s till when he retired in 1996. Even though it felt on deaf ears to a 17-year-old, 
He, he tried to push to never be afraid to be a clown. He is the history of the UNC Theater Department. He started with Helen Langworthy, and of course Nick Nolte was one of his students, all the way through the years of Billy Hahn and Megan Vandehey to the Beth Malone years to even current students. His theory was that every character in the show, when entering, exiting, finishing a line, should jump straight up vertical. And the theory was that height is funny. Lloyd used to say to me, Tom, I know you think all these UNC students on Broadway are important, and they are, but they're not nearly as important as all the students that we turn out who become high school drama teachers. I love a piano. I love a piano. I love to hear somebody play upon a piano. Well, we've lost one of the greatest minds in theater. And not only did he bring Broadway to Denver, but he made Denver the first stop for some of the greatest Broadway plays that have left, that have left New York. Clearly was willing to take a risk here, and he, he had developed an audience over time that was willing to take risks with him. And I thought a lot about what it was exactly that was at the core of his being that made such an impression on me and on other people. And all I could really come to in conclusion was that Randy led with his heart. Well, I, I think, you know, he saw the Denver community as some, a community that was going to embrace good work no matter what it was. I love the piano. I love to hear. I love to hear.